Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nightmares Minicast, because we're too lazy to do normal long podcasts anymore. I'm Zachary Smith, your host, and I'm joined by Dork Boy Number One, the Little Rakowski. How are you doing? It's not delivery. It's the Nightmares Minicast. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and uh, you got the fucking Italian over here. That is true. And uh, I do not, you know, eat DiGiorno, because it's fucking disgusting. You're and right. He eats Bertoli, you know, because... <laughs> every every Italian like prepackaged food has to have some Italian guy's name on it. Bertoli. There's that one fucking olive Zach, thing. What are we talking about? Uh, we're, okay, okay. okay. If, if there's not a lot of vowels in it, I'm not eating it. <laughs> okay, so today we're talking about dragons, <laughs> specific dragons in Reign of Fire, because that movie was fucking awesome, and I wanted to talk about dragons because he mentioned dragons about a week or two ago. So we're talking about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the movie. The uh, I saw it a long time ago. The, uh, so, Zach, tell us about dragons and about Reign of Fire, I guess. So, Reign of Fire is a movie about dragons taking over the earth because you got a... What the hell's his name? You got a little Christian bale who fucks around at a construction site, pokes a hole in a wall, goes through the hole, and wakes up a giant dragon that spawns millions of other dragons that have essentially just take over the world. That sounds terrible. It's actually really awesome. It actually is just a lot of fun. It's fucking awesome, and the dragons look amazing. Because this was back in the day when, you know, practical was still pretty widely used. Before, you know, Disney Were they just, practical dragons? For the most part, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, they looked really fucking awesome. There's a lot of great shots in there. The uh, Matthew McConaughey is, like, an, an obsessive, like, he's, like, Quinn times a thousand of his psychotic... Um, prejudice against fucking dragons. He's, That's actually a very good description. The, uh, he's fucking, he's, he's like psychotic of how much he hates dragons. It's 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 actually it's it's pretty fucking scary at some points. The um uh, but and that's and, and I think I said this last week like that's. That's the movie that I learned that Matthew McConaughey can act. He just gets paid way too much money to play himself. That's the uh, that's literally the whole gist with Matthew McConaughey. Like a. a I always knew him as as that dude in all the romantic comedies until I went back and watched Rain of Fire and I'm like, oh well, well shit, you can play a psycho, the um uh, and play psycho it well with an axe. Yes. Yeah, think. Have you not seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation? You know, uh, he's got a very good point. There. I have not. Also seen. known as Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He still plays Matthew McConaughey, just a little bit more on the psychotic side. Was it like his first movie with Renee Zellweger? Where who was was in that movie? Renee Zellweger was in it as well. Mm-hmm. But if you want to get technical about what their first movie together was. She was an extra in Days to Confuse, right. and she did walk past the camera during a scene that McConaughey was in. Okay, so... that is true. And he pretty much did that movie like right after Days and Confused, did he not? Yeah, Days and Confused was released in '93, and Tex Chainsaw was released in '94. Yeah, the because uh, I know they were both. And then they Texas. tried to re-release it later on after McConaughey hit it big in Time to Kill, and Zellweger hit it big in Jerry Maguire. And their agents tried to stop it from happening. <laughs> I wonder why. True story. <laughs> yeah, it is. Seriously, I wonder why. That movie was fucking amazing. Anyway, back to Rain Not of really. Fire. Not really. Yeah, back to Rain of Fire. You keep telling yourself that. So yeah, Rain of Fire, a movie about dragons taking over the world and Christian Bale fighting the good fight against the dragon army. But as cool as this movie is, there's a lot of cool shit, there's a lot of cool scenes and everything like that. The fact that this movie ends with them killing one giant-ass dragon and then all the dragons, it's just like, yeah, game over. Yeah. They can't spread anymore. They can't. There's one female in a billion males. So they phantom menaced it. No. No. Uh, no. Where it's like they destroyed that one thing at the end, and then all the droids just kind of actually te- stopped. Actually, technically, that's well Independence Day. Yeah, that kind of Independence, first. Independence Day. I'm not as familiar with Independence Day, so. All right. But they, all right, that. But that did. Yeah. 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 They, 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 both of them work. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say is no, what Phantom at. Menace is a masterpiece. Uh, whose masterpiece? Because certainly not mine. The uh, but anyway, the uh, I, that's actually pretty true. I met somebody that worked on Phantom Menace that called it one of the worst movies ever made, and he said, "I'm allowed to say that because I worked on it." No, he's not. He's wrong. Continue <laughs> on. Anyway, uh, that's actually no, that's actually more based in actual science than than uh, those two movies are because. That's how bees work. Like if the if the f- one female bee gets killed, the queen bee, then the whole fucking hive is fucked. But you're talking but they about just don't, but worldwide. But do they absolutely stop everything and doing cold in their tracks when she goes? I suppose. I, well, you know, like, what, what's I'm not a bee expert, so yeah. I'm legitimately asking. They, I mean, that's I, I, that's all I know. I don't know that Here's much. Here's another thing. There's multiple female bees out there. 
There's just this one female dragon that's fucking huge, I might point out. Like, like the, the male Define dragon. huge. Like, okay. So you have Mark, mm -hmm. and then you have, like, this little thing right here. Let's go with that. So that's the male dragon? Yeah. Or that's a human? That's a male that's dragon. That's a male dragon, and female dragon is Mark. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck both of you. Because they're mean. Yeah. It's okay, fatty. Ew. Anyway. So, yeah. You have, like, billions of these little fuckers all across the planet. Like, dragons have taken over the entire world. They're just burning livestock, burning everything just for the mm -hmm. sake of burning everything. Because they hate humans. If this is a male dragon, what is a human compared to this? Grain of salt. The, uh, it's really I can make fun. a funny joke right now, but that's below me. Uh, I... <laughs> It, it certainly is below you. <laughs> the um, uh, directly below you, Zach. <laughs> the um, I'm just jealous. The uh, am I? I don't think so. <laughs> and These once are the again, best friends I have. <laughs> and once again, Brandon's you know <laughs> questioning his life choices. He's always questioning his life's choices, including us. That's yeah. a that's a big life choice that he always questions. Anyway, but yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what Brandon always says. A movie needs to happen. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I love this movie. There's a lot of cool visuals, cool scenes and everything like that. I just always find it funny that there's just one giant ass female dragon. And then once she's gone, it's just game over. Humans win. The, uh, there was And no nobody could figure that out. Like, cause it, it was just that female dragon in the beginning, but somehow she spawned all these other fucking dragons and it just whoosh. You know what's something funny though? Like World's over. The um, there was a lot of that got caught up in that whole craze of big epics from like '96 all the way up to like 2005. There was a lot of like a lot of fucking epics during that time. What year was this movie? 2002. 2002. 2002. Okay. So. Because they also released a game that was really fun. Oh, I didn't even know that. Half of it, you were the humans playing as, uh, you know, Van Sant and all that. At least I believe you were playing him. The other half, you actually got to play as a fucking dragon that in is. a PS2 game. It was that, fucking awesome. That you is pretty cool. You had to burn shit, destroy shit. It was awesome. Fully recommended. That is that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. The, um, I... Yeah, from what I remember from this movie, the I, I really enjoyed it, and I think that was, that was before I saw Jaws. So, it, it, you know, it, that whole idea of you know people hunting you know uh, giant creatures and shit was pretty cool. So the um, hold up, hold up, hold up. You saw Rain of Fire before you saw Jaws. I did. The uh, how and, how old were you? In two thousand and two, I don't know what uh, I don't know. I can't do math right now. Did the, I saw Jaws in ninety six? I was like two years old. The uh, I did not. The um, I did not see that at that time. The um, I saw it when I was like ten. The um, uh, it, I don't remember when I first saw Jaws, but I know is before I hit the double digits. The uh, dude, it worked out that way. I don't know. <laughs> the um, I didn't plan it that way. This fucking guy. The um, uh, my we first. We don't blame you. We just blame the way your parents raised you in that regard. <laughs> Whatever. First, I think, no, the first Spielberg movie I ever saw was Jurassic Park. The, um, Basic. The, uh, eh, whatever. The, um, is what was out at the time, so. It was, was out movie. at the time. I know. The, uh, I'm, I'm very much aware, Zach. The, uh, but, uh, yeah, I remember it being a, a really good movie from when I remember. I like to revisit it. It's been a long time since like I've I seen said, it. Like I said, I decided to revisit it like five years. No, not five years ago. Like two years ago or something. I was just like, you know, I remembered it and I, I wanted to play the game. But was it I, before or after we became roommates that you revisited it? Oh, it was during. During? Okay. Yeah. So I was just like, you know, I feel like fucking watching this movie. So I didn't like, well, this movie is still fucking great. Yeah, and I, and I do remember it actually being rather intense and rather, you know, there, there was a lot of very horror-oriented things. I mean, like, it was definitely a different from, you know, most of the epics that were out at that time. There's a far more drama and far more despair. It reminded me more of, like, the post-apocalyptic shit of the 70s than it did of that, like, that later era. It was a lot, it was a lot more, like, you know, like, we're really fucked. Like, a lot oh, of this, yeah. a lot of the other movies, like, were, um, you know, were still fun, like you know, and this movie was fun, but it had a hint of like. No, this movie was dark. It and was bleak. It, had, and it had it had that dark and bleak, and actually, that's I think that's what was enjoyable because it was fun to watch Matt McConaughey be a psycho. And so when you say dark and bleak, compared to the Viggo Mortensen movie The Road, no, not that close. More like De Death Race Two Thousand. 
Um, uh, the original '70s Death Race. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So like, like Mad Mad Max type of you know post apocalyptic bleak type of shit. And Mad like Ma- you're struggling. Like, you like have Mad no Max way. is post apocalyptic, but I wouldn't call it bleak. Like it's pretty desolate. No, the um, I it's definitely not the road. It's just, it's okay. not the road. The, um, yeah, like these guys are bunkered down in a castle. They have their like crop fields that are like way far in the back, so that like you know you try to remain hidden. You can only send a certain amount of people out there every so often to get it because if the dragons find so you, it's they very see that. Claustrophobic in a way. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. So it's basically the Terminator War, but with dragons. Yes. Yeah, you can actually say that. So if okay. Salvation was a good movie. The uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, no, I said if Salvation was a good oh, movie. Oh, if Salvation was, was a good, good movie, movie no, it would be very a, similar. That's a bit. huge fucking if. Yeah, but. it would be very comparable. But yeah, the, the um, yeah, this is this is a Bale's good apocalypse movie. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. that definitely is. Uh, yeah, definitely yeah, true. Another reason I wanted to rewatch the movie is because I don't know why I like Gerard Butler is in the movie. But for some reason, I remember Gerard Butler being Van Sant and not Matthew McConaughey. No, so no. when I saw Matthew McConaughey, was that I'm like, wow, I did not fucking remember that. Holy shit. Well, the way, at first glance, when you're looking at the photos and shit, it don't look like Matthew McConaughey. It oh, just it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. You, you got mean, a different McConaughey. He's tattooed the fuck up. He's in army gear. He's shave headed. And he's ready for fucking war. Exactly. So he's all, all right, all right, all right. You know, no. He's, he doesn't say that, but he's, yeah. Actually, no, he doesn't say that. That's disappointing. Matthew, what was wrong with you? The uh, he, It wasn't in the script. Since when does he care? He's a very serious actor, so I'd imagine he pays some attention to the script. I guess. Yeah, this is one of those habits that, you know... He doesn't just show up and is like, all right, this is my dialogue. I don't care what the script says. The, uh... <laughs> Look, if Samuel I have Jackson worked with somebody find... like that before. It's a nightmare. Look, if Samuel Jackson can find a way to put motherfucker into every single thing he's in, or because... Brad or Brad Pitt can eat in every fucking movie that he's in, that's his thing. He's yeah. always eating. The uh... or Dennis Leary going on a rant. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> dude. They rewrote when they found out that Dennis Leary was interested to be in Demolition Man. They rewrote that entire character <laughs> to com to uh, uh, to compensate for Dennis Leary playing that part. <laughs> Fucking great. The um, uh, but yeah, no, it, like it's one of those things that you can't unsee. Uh, Brad Pitt is always eating it in almost all of the movies that he's in. The uh, why that is, I have no idea. Lies. A Deadpool oh, two. I said almost every movie. And ironically enough, he got, uh, his payment was a beverage no, uh, movie. No, that I remember. I thought that was pretty funny. The, um, uh, he, was pay- he was not paid anything except a cup of coffee uh, from Starbucks. Good for him. That was his payment for that. He's come a long way since his character in True Romance. He, that, and then, uh, th- uh, th- uh, was that, I think it was Thumb and Louise yeah, first. Little, yeah. yeah. It was two years prior to True Romance, but I like his performance in True Romance. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, before we sign out, there's just one thing I'd like to point out. There are no other fucking good dragon movies. Not really. Reign of Fire is the only dragon-centric movie where it's, like, apocalyptic or it's just about fucking Hugh dragons. the Winged Serpent is fun. I don't know if I would call it good, but it's fun. Never heard of it. Was uh, that that 70s or 80s movie? Yeah, it's, like, I... late 70s, early 80s. Larry Cohen directed it and wrote it. Um, pretty good stop, low budget stop motion for the dragon. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he got the idea when he was looking up at the Chrysler building one day and was like, that would make a really cool location for a dragon's nest. Yeah. And then that's where the that, uh, that's, idea that's, for the movie came sometimes from. Sometimes that's all it takes. You know what the funny thing is, and now that I'm really thinking about it, there's only, and just let's talk about the movies as a whole, whether or not they're good or bad is irrelevant. But there's only like three movies, three or four movies that are actually dragon centric. Mm-hmm. Like the rest of them that are good movies have dragons in them, yeah. but they're not the focus. If of dragons. you want to see a really cool looking practical effects dragon, the 1981 movie Dragon Slayer. Oh, never even yeah. heard of it. The story itself is kind of dated, a little slow for today's standards. But in terms, like. It's the movie that went up against Writers of the Lost Ark for special effects that year at the Oscars. Oh, Um, shit. um, But the way that they did the dragon, they used a technique called go motion, which is like stop motion. So it's like you have like the dragon puppet, but instead of moving it frame by frame and taking a picture each time, it's you program the movements in like this wire skeleton in the puppet through a computer and then the computer moves it. That way you have realistic motion blur with the puppet. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the only other thing I can think of just while talking about this is like is Dungeons and Dragons and Aragon, but no, neither one of those movies. Okay, you're, you're you're done. You're done. Um, <laughs> which also talking about Go Motion, that was originally what they were going to use for the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park before oh. Spielberg saw the CG tests. And I'm glad he did, cause holy shit. Yeah. But yeah, I I would just like to see another dragon movie on the caliber of Brain of Fire, cause realistically, that's the only, in my opinion, good right dragon one. movie out there. Hmm? Right one. Yeah, cause we have the money to fucking film it. It costs no money to write. No. Write it, send it in. You never know who'll pick it up. Oh yeah, so they could just steal the idea and then make all the money off of it. <laughs> Fuck you. They, they sometimes you know what? Sometimes the paycheck's the paycheck. The uh, so yeah, you write it in. They change a few things. No, we don't have to pay you. The uh, anyway, I'm not gonna get in that that debate. But uh, yeah, Rain that's of Fire for is another a, podcast. That is for another podcast. Rain of Fire is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah for one to remember, I'd like to revisit it. I have not had an opportunity to do so. Great movie. But, I would uh, just like to see it. Great movie. It's it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun. Matthew McConaughey is fucking crazy in it. Um, he just you know what his performance alone is worth the price of admission on that. I they, say the dragons are, but yeah, the dragons are fucking awesome for sure. But like he is, Christian Bale's okay. You know, is okay. He plays a good character for it. Matthew McConaughey is kind of what you come there for. Hmm. The uh, so I definitely I do recommend it from what I remember. Um, I want to revisit it, but I remember it being good. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right, yeah, that's everything. Brandon, take us out. All right, thank you for listening to this episode of the Nightmares Minicast. You can listen to all of our previous episodes of the Nightmares podcast wherever podcasts are available. You can also check us out on social media at Midwest Horror Network on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Slasher. And, of course, if you are checking us out on YouTube, if you can smash that like button, stab that subscribe, and click that little dingy bell to be notified every time we drop amazing content right here at MHN. And if you've already stabbed the subscribe button, go ahead and stab the share button. That'd be awesome, too. We want to get the word out. We're finally doing video. We're very, very proud of it. Um, I want to get the word out um, because this is YouTube's a visual medium, and uh, you know this is where we want to live uh, in this visual world. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye.